I'm on the SS Aqua right now, and Pupitar has just hit level 56. So I am going to take out Screech for Earthquake. And by the way, this isn't the final move for Tyranitar just yet. There's one more improvement left to add to it. And all that separates me from evolution now is a level 34 Butterfree. Trash, that's enough to kill it. And here we go, it's evolution time. And I'll be honest, I've seen a lot of better sprites of Tyranitar, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. I insisted on having a Tyranitar in my team, so I suppose, well, I can live with the sprite. Oh yeah, as I said, not so good. So that's it for now, I'll be seeing you at the Saffron Gym. Okay, so now that Pupitar has evolved into Tyranitar, I am going to put it like who, you know, eh, in the back row, so to speak, because um, now it's got a huge level advantage over the rest of my team as well, so I'm going to focus on Gengar, Suicune, and also Raikou for now. Though for Sabrina, I am going to bring back Tyranitar since her levels are a lot higher than those of her underlings. And also because, well, what can I say, I'm an artist! Her ass is my canvas! And speaking of Sabrina, she has got a huge makeover in Hard Gold and Soul Silver, and as far as I can tell, there aren't many people that are happy with the change. So, I guess it turns out that Pokemon Pan have a Teenage Dominatrix fetish. Who knew? But back to Tyranitar for a bit. There's a move set for it that goes all the way back to Generation 3, and it's called Boa. If you're not familiar with the concept, it's Substitute, Focus Punch, a Dark Move, and depending on the generation, either Ice Beam or Thunderbolt or Flamethrower, but the principle remains pretty much the same. It's a mixed sub-puncher. But something I don't understand, why Boa? That doesn't make any sense. Boa is the, the kind of name you'd expect out of a set for a snake Pokemon. And Tyranitar, well, what can I say? It's... It doesn't look like a snake very much. So I'd be very happy if someone could explain to me just why the hell it's called Boa. And moving on to something else, if you paid attention to my recent activity, you'll have noticed that I talked about a, a Star Wars crawl parody that I made way back then in the time when I was still doing Ridden Rants, and I made a video adaptation of it on YouTube, and yeah, it used the Star Wars uh, intro music, and as a result, it was supposedly blocked in Germany. But there's one of my German viewers, thanks to Ruben Nishara for the tip, I probably just uh, annihilated that name, if that's the case, I'm really sorry. But yeah, he told me that it that he could see the video just fine, even though uh, YouTube says that my video is banned in Germany. So if there's anyone else from Germany watching, I would appreciate it if you tried to watch it and if you could see uh, if it really is blocked in Germany or not. Ah, YouTube, once again fucking up something that a multi-billion dollar corporation should be able to do with the snap of a finger. So that's another trainer down, and if you haven't noticed yet, I'm using the same strategy with the teleport tiles that I used in red, that is. I always go with the one that is uh, horizontal from my current position. So, yeah, I think I've been all the trainers there. I noticed that there are four trainers in the gym instead of seven, like in red, blue, and yellow, and here's Sabrina already. So I'm going to put Tyranitar in my lead, so we're going to be able to at least uh, flex that newfound muscle. Yeah, and now she's trying to sound cool even though she fails miserably at it. I don't enjoy battling. Didn't the gym leader in red, blue, and yellow say the same thing? In fact, maybe I think it was Sabrina! And if she hates battling so much, then why is she a gym leader? And why has she occupied that gym leader position for at least three years? Makes absolutely no sense, I know. So the battle is gonna begin, it's gonna be Tyranitar versus Espeon. And I think if you have a $5 to bet on Tyranitar, I, think I suggest you do so right now. 
because, yeah, Tyranitar, use Crunch, that's gonna be a one-hit KO for sure, and it's the exact same thing as with Pupitar in the last gym, you know? There's an, an immunity to take advantage of, so all that's left is weak normal attacks, which the Rock type can take care of very well. So now, up next is Alakazam already, so... Oh! Reflect? Are you kidding me? Crunch is a special attack! It's not gonna do anything against it! It's like, instead of going with a bulletproof vest, you go with a bulletproof jockstrap! But anyway, that's another one-hit KO, and as you can imagine, it had it coming. Reflect against special attacks. Yeah, wonderful. Mr. Mime, is it gonna do light screen at least? Nope, not even, because I'm faster! I remembered Mr. Mime having a bit more speed than this, but then again, Tyranitar is 10 levels over it. And that's another gym battle for the books. Three hits, three kills. And sweetie, if you have trouble foreseeing the power level of your opponents, I suggest that you invest in a scouter. So once the post-battle dialogue is out of the way, I'm going to heal my team, and then it's off to Lavender, so I can at least gain access to the to the radio tower. I'm gonna have to do it sooner or later, so I'm just going to do now. And it doesn't look like she's gonna give me a TM, nope, and... Oh god, no, not another love and friendship speech! I've already had enough of these for a lifetime, and I'm only two games into the series! Now, to get out of here... And yeah, I'm going uh, through the same way I used to get to Sabrina, and there's probably a faster way, but uh, I don't feel like getting lost in that place and needing like 10 minutes to get out of there. That would be rather stupid, and okay, I think I'm close to the entrance. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that was another fantastic battle. A man of a few words. In this gym, at least. Because in others, he just can't stop yapping on. Okay, so as I said, okay, now I'm gonna take off Tyranitar as my lead, because as I said, it's got a huge lead in terms of levels. And I have noticed this just yesterday night that uh, the usage stats on Shoddy for November have been up for a few days now. I haven't thought to check it out earlier, so you're only getting the scoop now. Unless you already looked at the stats to begin with. And the biggest conclusion that we can reach is that Hard Gold and Soul Silver was a seemingly perfect attempt at making weaker Pokémon more usable. Nonetheless, after looking at the usage data, we can draw one conclusion. It has been a catastrophic failure. The powerhouses are the same as they used to be in Platinum, and we only got a select few Pokémon that had significant jumps in usage. Of course, there are very slight jumps, a lot of them, but they're like two or three ranks, and you can get that uh, just like every month without a new game coming out. So for all intents and purposes, we're gonna treat those as no increase. And there were a lot of them. Miss Magius hasn't changed despite getting Nasty Plot. Punch Crow hasn't changed despite getting Brave Bird. And those two were really hyped to make it into overuse, believe me. And also overhyped was Super Fang Walrein. I'm, I, I think we're all familiar with Walrein does best right now, and everyone thought that Super Fang would be an incredible addition to that set, but in the end, Surf and Blizzard are still a lot more popular. So there's only, so there's probably one major problem that prevents Super Fang from getting the love it was expected to get. And that is those pesky ghosts that are in they're seemingly immune to all the good stuff like explosion, super fang, that kind of stuff. Even though you know normal is such a crappy type, usually it gets some moves that are really worth being immune to, such as as I just mentioned, explosion and super fang. Well, it looks like it's gonna be a double program since I haven't finished talking about this yet, so I will be seeing you after these commercials. Or lag thereof. <laughs> 